hey, guess what? We're going to be talking about Uranus. In fact, we're adding a ring around Uranus. And did you know Uranus lies on its side? Okay, clearly this is going to be a problem. We could try calling it Uranus, but let's face it, it's Uranus. It was discovered by William Herschel in 1781, but he was a massive suck-up to his king, King George III, and named it Georgium Sidus, which translates as George's star. Which is weird, because he was an astronomer and he knew that it wasn't a star, it was a planet. Plus, despite the British Empire's best efforts, King George wasn't king of everywhere, and no one else wanted to boost his ego. German astronomer Johann Bode suggested Uranus, as it's Greek slash Latin and matches the names of the other planets. Unfortunately, everyone who wasn't German pronounced it wrong. You can get a more detailed version of all of this on CGP Grey's YouTube channel, along with the same jokes. In the last episode, we made Saturn and used a 2.5D ring, which looked great, but being a plane meant you couldn't fly through it. This problem is solved pretty easily if you have Tropco Particula. But if you can't afford to spend an extra 300 bucks, then it's entirely possible to achieve using CC Particle World. It's just a lot more effort. And that's what we're covering today. For comparison, I've included several comps in the downloadable project file. I'm going to be looking at the simplest version here, but I'll be mentioning improvements you can make, and those improvements are included in the file which is linked to in the description below. There's also a particular version too. I don't know about you, but I get fed up of YouTube tutorials which don't include project files. Sometimes you just need to be able to jump to the final result. A couple of quick notes. Like all the other planets, I'll be using video copilots free or plugin for the planet. And I've been preparing these videos for ages and Adobe have been busy updating their expressions area, which means I've stuck with the legacy expressions code. You can change this in the preferences if you need to. Okay, let's get started a 1080p com which my Uranus planet has already set up and a camera and a parallel light standing in for our sun. If you're not sure how to get this set up, check out their Making Mercury and Making Jupiter tutorials, also linked below. For those who are familiar with my methods are going to recognise this next step. And for this tutorial it's not just a nice to have but really important as we go further. What we're going to do is create a new null object by going to Layer, New, Null Object. Make it 3D and hit enter to name it Uranus Null. Expand the layers properties and expand the effects properties on the Uranus orb and use the pick whip to link the position properties to the Null's position. And now link the rotation controls in the same way. Now let's duplicate the Uranus Null object, select it and go to Edit Duplicate or just Ctrl plus D. Rename this Rotator and make it a child of Uranus Null. Now duplicate this layer and rename it Emitter Position and make it a child of Rotator. Duplicate Emitter Position and rename this to Emitter, but make sure it's not a child of anything. We have to get the world coordinates of this layer into CC Particle World in a moment, so now we use our first expression, and it's one I've used before. I call it the Two World expression, and you can copy it from the description. Hit P on the emitter layer and Alt click on the stopwatch, and then paste in the Two World expression. Hit P on the emitter position null, and if you alter the coordinates, you'll see the emitter layer's position changes too. Now, Let's add in CC Particle World, so let's create a new layer, layer, new, solid, make a comp size and hit OK. Hit enter and rename it Ring. Now go to Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World. And in Grid and Guides, turn off everything, except Radius. I just find these at best distracting and sometimes confusing. Set the birth rate to 200. We'll be changing this later, and the longevity to 100. We don't want the particles disappearing. 
In the producer section, we need to add different expressions for the x, y, and z coordinates. You can just paste these from the description too. This links the particle producer to the emitter's null position. Now set the radius to 0 0.006. This will create a circle for the radius. Now depending on the plane your ring is in, you could reduce one of the dimensions to a smaller number. But it gets confusing. I'm going to first build this as a horizontal ring, and when I'm happy with it, I'll rotate it at the end. But that messes up the shape of the emitter if it's not a sphere. In physics, set everything to zero. Now if we jump over to the rotator null for a moment, hit R to expose the rotation controls. Set a keyframe for the y-axis and move forward 30 seconds and set another. This time with a value of 10 full rotations. And while we're here, select the ring layer and hit an asterisk or star key to add a marker. If we change the view to the top, you can now see we've made a circle. But if I switch back to active camera and position it just right, you can see that even though the ring is in 3D space, it doesn't go behind the orb layer. Now, Trapco in particular uses obscuration layers to achieve this, but it is possible to cheat with CC Particle World. This plugin has its own coordinate system, so we can use values in Z space to turn off the emitters and make a copy of the particles layer and put it behind the orb layer. Sounds complicated? It is, but it works and is simple to do. Quick caveat, it is possible to do this as well by applying CC Particle World directly to the orb layer and checking the composite with original checkbox, but it doesn't quite work with camera moves, so I'm not using it here. Let's alt click on the birthrate.watch and we're going to use an if statement to set whether the particles emit at all. This expression is also in this expression is also in the description, but basically if the time is before the marker and the Z position is less than or equal to zero, use the value set. Otherwise emit zero particles. Now I can duplicate this layer, drag it below the orb layer and alter the birth rate expression to be greater than instead of less than. Okay, so for ease, I'm now going to keyframe the position of the emitter position null to create a spiral. I tried using hold keyframes and jumping position for the emitter, but I ended up with a line of particles. It also has to be outside in, rather than starting closer to the planet, as CC Particle World layers older particles on top of newer ones. I keyframed it to be 200 pixels closer. Back in our original rings layer, open up the particle section and set the type to textured disk. I've then made a new composition using this image of rocks from Pixabay. I made the comp small, only 300 by 250 pixels, and used the image to show one rock per frame. And using the page down key and control plus shift D, split the layer, and then I used the mask tool to hide the other rocks. Drag this rocks comp into the Uranus comp and then go to layer, time, enable time remapping. Now drag to extend the layer to the length of your comp. Alt click on the time stopwatch and type random brackets 0, 0,4 close brackets divide by 25 or 24 or whatever the frame rate was. If we solo that for a moment, you can see that we now have a different type of rock on each frame which if we jump back to our rings layer, we can set as the texture for the particles. Set the texture time to birth, so each particle will look like the frame it was created on, and set the rotation speed to 50. Set the birth and death sizes to 0 0.05. 
the size variation to 100% and the max opacity to 100%. Now open up the opacity map and fill it all in. Set the birth and death colours to a medium grey. We don't want to colour our rocks. If we do, it's going to be easier to colour them in the pre-comp. If we delete our rings 2 layer, duplicate our rings layer and move it below orb and switch the birth expression again, we have our rocky ring. And finally, if we jump back to our Uranus null and set the Z rotation to minus 98 degrees, we have our vertical planet and ring. Now, one thing that's not a problem for Uranus due to its angle of rotation, but is a problem for doing a Saturn-like planet where it's casting a shadow onto the rings, is that it's really difficult. I ended up faking this using an adjustment layer, and you can see an example of that in the downloadable project. I've also set up keyframes to fade up the number of particles, just to hide that initial splotch. If you want bands instead of one continuous swath of rocks, then you have to add lots of null objects and layers to assemble. It's possible, and I've also included that in that downloadable project file. And that's it. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please share it and let me know in the comments below. I've stopped including magnification, but if you want that back, let me know too. Next time, Neptune. And while we will be using Orb, we're going to also use Cinema 4D Lite to create a gas giant in a totally different way.